I've taken both other supplies to bits. I might as well take the 12 watt one to bits as well. So this is a 12 volt DC power supply that puts out one amp for driving things like LED strip and LED lamps. So I'm guessing this one comes to bits in the same the same way. Maybe not. I can see there are clips under the casing, so I shall just apply the force. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Nope, still doesn't want to come to bits. It's better. Oh. Right here. This one differs from the others in that there's no... I'd have to take the transformer off if I wanted to see if it's got good electrical separation in the secondary. I'm just trying to see if there's anything really obvious here I can look at. Actually, you know what? I don't think it's got pins coming off. I think it may actually be the windings coming off that too. Uh, on the secondary, so it may actually have the well insulated secondary connections on that. Again, I wouldn't be able to actually tell for sure without taking it off. I can see a nice little soda blob there, which isn't too thrilling. Um, so, looking at the separation, well, the separation track in this one is really obvious when you look at it because it's this big path down here. That's very good, and it's got a, an anti tracking slot between there. So far, these power supplies have quite impressed me. So, we've got the, well there's the chip, let's see what the chip is. Is it another of those Fairchild chips? Crack out the phone with its micro magnifying function, microscope. Let's see what this chip is. Oop, upside down. No, it's a THX203. THX203. I was looking at one of those recently. I'm sure I've got a data sheet for that as well. One moment. Um, There's a bit of a data sheet. Oh, there's another bit as well. Yeah, it looks a bit like a rip-off of the Fairchild type chip. I mean, obviously Fairchild don't have exclusive rights to this. This one does, however, have a schematic that looks as though it could be virtually textbook for the construction of these power supplies. Because if you look at the output, there's the single diode. Um, there's the feedback circuit using the Optima isolator and the TL431A. Uh, you've got the capacitor, an LED on that side, the inductor, then another capacitor for smoothing and then the actual monitoring uh, taken from direct from the output for the uh, chip that's um, driving the Optima isolator. And that scary little capacitor they always put in that bridges from the main side to the other side. I don't like the fact they use a sort of earthing symbol because it really isn't the earthing symbol and that's not earth either. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, it also shows uh, clearly the little snubber network they put across the primary, which is the diode uh, resistor and capacitor, uh, which is a sort of bi direct, it's a mono single directional snubber network effectively. Um, it's probably, uh, it's maybe part forms a sort of resonance circuit, I'm not 100% sure, maybe it, I'm not 100% sure about that. It's got the second primary here that does the power supply for the chip, so it's got its diode and the capacitor, and again I'm guessing that when you power it up that capacitor will get trickle charged from the chip until it reaches a, enough, a high enough voltage that it can run for a short burst, and as soon as it starts driving the uh, primary, um, then that will then provide the supply for the chip. It shows quite extensive filtering and input. It shows a, what appears to be marked as a transorb. Um, 
and a capacitor, a bidirectional transorb, so pretty much a metal oxide varistor, a voltage dependent resistor, then a um, common mode inductor, then the full bridge rectifier, and then 33 microfarad at 400 volts. That's quite optimistic. Let's see what we actually ended up here with uh, the capacitors. So this is the main capacitor on the mains input side. There is a full wave bridge rectifier, these four diodes. Uh, there's a filtering capacitor, a fuse, which is nice, a choke, That capacitor there, Bridget, that's the um, interference suppression capacitor that bridges from the uh, main side to the low voltage side. The ones that I just don't trust at all. The capacitor is 10 microfarad at 400 volt. Uh, this capacitor, I'm guessing, in conjunction with this diode, is the power supply. I'm looking for the filtering circuit here. There are spaces for components underneath uh, other diodes and capacitors. I'm guessing that might be a multiplier section for when you're using it in lower voltage. Oh, there's the there's this the snubber network there for the uh, primary. Then the transformer, there's a great big diode which then feeds these two capacitors which are just in parallel. There's the little um, feedback chip, the, the chip that drives the opto-isolator. The probably a 431 again. It's a bit scuffed looking, quite hard to read. You know, all, all of these have been pretty good so far. They're not too bad at all. Yeah, I might get some more of these because they actually look quite useful. Particularly the um, the 18 watt one, the, the one to half amp one, because it was just so beefy looking and so well insulated. I may actually just strip the transformer in this one, uh, the 18 watt one, to bits and just double check that it's got good isolation. And if I'm happy with it, I'll buy a few more of these because I noticed the same style on eBay was offering multiple purchase discounts. So that, that's not a bad power supply at all.